Today, I'm going for my first run in the Nike Zoomfly 3. Thirteen point one nine miles, seven minutes, thirty four seconds per mile today, taking the Nike Zoom Fly three for its first run, and I had just an absolutely fantastic time running in the shoe. This is a shoe that you guys have been asking me for the video on, and I feel like I'm the last one to have gotten this shoe because the US release wasn't until Thursday, July 11th in the United States, but uh, definitely a shoe that was worth the wait, and I'm very glad I also waited to get this white color. I had an opportunity the night before to get the shoe while I was at the Nike uh, pop-up race, race 001 at Heartbreak Hill Running Company, but I was like, I don't think I could do a third shoe in my closet uh, in that electric green. Uh, so I decided to wait and went to the Nike store today to pick this one up and I just absolutely love this white version of the Zoom Fly 3. It just looks fantastic. What we've got in this shoe is React foam in the midsole. All the cushioning is React foam. You got a carbon fiber plate inside there adding for a little bit more stability and for that push off feeling. And on the upper, instead of flying it like we saw last year, we've got the vapor weave material, which is something that is also on the vapor fly next. Now the whole idea with the vapor weave material is to give a material that is uh, rigid enough to hold up to the stresses of running a marathon, but also is something that uh, wicks moisture away and dries quickly. One of the complaints that a lot of people had, and my understanding is one of the complaints that Elliot Kachogi specifically had in running in the Flyknit uh, Vaporfly from last year, the 4%, was that as he sweat, uh, sweat would collect in the fly knit material and then it would stay in there and make the shoe heavier. So we wanted something that would not do that and that's why they developed and started implementing this vapor weave material. Now the upper is a little bit different than what we see in the vapor fly next even though it's the same material. And what we have here is basically a sandwich of material. So the vapor weave is on the outside and on the innermost level there is um, like a stretchy mesh material that's on the inside. And in between that, you could see it slightly here. There's a little bit of like a stretchy elastic cage. It's not really a cage, but it's a material that kind of holds this midfoot area a little bit more snug. And that's what's working in this upper. The other thing that I didn't realize before I put it on is that there's no tongue in this shoe at all. Like the Flyknit version of the Zoom Fly last year, there's no tongue. This one is the same thing. It's all one big booty that you can cinch down a little bit with the laces. Uh, I felt like the fit was actually really quite good and better than the fit of the Zoom Fly Flyknit of last year, especially in the heel cup area. Again, we're seeing that little bit of padding uh, that just goes right around the back. Uh, feels very much like the padding that I saw in the first version of Zoom Fly that I ran in the Zoom Fly SP. So a little bit of padding, a little bit to keep your ankle in the shoe. And overall, I felt like there was very little looseness in the shoe, which is something that I felt a lot of in the heel, especially in the Zoom Fly Flyknit. This upper is just absolutely fantastic. Today, as I took this new Zoom Fly 3 for its first run, and especially because it has that vapor weave material that we talked about, and again, here is Nike trolling us some more, writing the word vapor weave on the part of the shoe that is not actually vapor weave. They're put it on the part of the shoe where all the eyelets uh, for the lacing is. But that aside, testing out this vapor weave material, just like I did for the next percent, you got to get the shoe wet if you want to test out how the vapor weave material does and how it handles water. And the thing that I'll note is, as I went through a lot of water today and some deeper than I intended water, but what I noticed was as the shoe got wet, it felt a little heavier than it should have been. So I felt like I took on a lot of water initially, 
but I also felt like the shoe got rid of the water very quickly. So as I've run in other shoes uh, this year in similar types of water or even other Nike running shoes like the Pegasus Turbo 2 or the Pegasus 36, I felt like those shoes took on water and then I could hear the, my feet squishing for a lot longer than I thought they should be squishing for those two shoes, the Peg 36 and the Peg Turbo 2. In the vapor weave of the Zoomfly 3, it took on a lot of water as I got these things really wet, but the shoe did kind of get rid of that water relatively quickly as well. So very happy with how this material holds up. A lot of you guys in comments on Instagram uh, already have been mentioning that you really like this white color, uh, but you're worried that it's gonna get really dirty. But that hasn't really been my experience with this Vaporweave style material. It reminds me a lot of the material that they put on the Zoomfly SP in terms of like it's somewhat translucent, it's very flexible, but also very strong at the same time. and kind of has that rip stop material kind of quality to it. I think it's the same material or similar material that I also saw on the React Element 87 that I also wore around just casually. And although that was more of a gray uh, sea green color, I also felt like that didn't really pick up dirt all that well. And if anything else, kind of repelled it a little bit because it has kind of like that scotch guard kind of feel to the material this is what it looks like after that first run the outsole uh looks like it's been run on pavement for uh, quite a bit but the upper looks just absolutely uh pristine now in terms of the overall running feel for running with this shoe i took it out for a half marathon distance right out of the box it felt really great i don't really think that there's too much of a break-in but i'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video but the overall running sensation of this is this is uh the shoe that is closest to its kind of vaporfly big brother than i think that nike has ever been able to get and so the way that the Vaporfly versus the Zoomfly have kind of been described to me uh, or that I've heard Nike people talk about them is in a couple of ways is that like the Vaporfly, the 4% is what you race in and then the Zoomfly is what you train in. Other ways that I've seen people talk about it is that the Vaporfly is kind of the flagship and then the Zoomfly is kind of the knockdown version. And so neither of those things I don't think are inconsistent, but there's kind of two ways of thinking about it. But in terms of the way the Vaporfly Next and the Zoomfly 3 perform, in terms of just the first run that I've gone on with it so far, I feel like those two shoes are very close and the sensations are very similar. And so even just looking at the design of this shoe, it doesn't look like an iteration off the Zoomfly flying it to getting to this Zoomfly 3. It looks like uh, an adaptation of the Zoomfly compared to what the new Vaporfly now looks like. And you're definitely seeing a lot of those similarities visually here, especially in the way that the midsole is sculpted and the way that the outsole pattern looks, especially with the rubber and the way the rubber pads are placed and the way the midsole foam is exposed in this midsole and the way it's shaped. The overall feel though is very similar. Running in these, you definitely get that Vaporfly Next sensation in this shoe. Uh, the same mechanics and behavior is also there too in terms of the relatively high stack height, the stability underfoot, and also the fact that when you run in it, it doesn't like to run at like low and slow pace. It's kind of default speed out of the box that it likes is a little bit faster. So even today, uh, I had raced the night before and in the middle of the day, I went for a lunchtime run and still this shoe just wanted me to go faster. And even when I thought I was just kind of moving at a more relaxed pace, I was looking at my watch and seeing uh, I'm running faster than kind of I thought I was. So if you're looking to use this shoe for a variety of things. I don't think it's the best choice for that, but if it's for something that you wanna have for your faster days or even racing, I think it's gonna be a really great choice for you there. And the other thing that I'll comment on is that as I'm running with this shoe, it has a very similar bouncy feel, especially with the carbon fiber plate that's in there uh, to the Vaporfly Next, but it's not quite the Vaporfly Next. It's not ZoomX Foam, it's React Foam. It's just not as soft, so React Foam is extremely bouncy but it's not as forgiving as zoomx foam and it doesn't have as much give back as zoomx foam does either it's react foam so if you run it in the prior versions of the zoomfly 
what that midsole is gonna feel like. It's more like the Vaporfly than it's ever been, but still very much a zoom fly. There's a very strong push off sensation, and that's kind of the biggest thing that I got off from the zoom fly flyknit last year was that for those longer, faster days, I really felt like as I was moving to have a very strong stride, it was right there being able to push off for me. It wasn't a fast cadence type of shoe, but it was a strong push off kind of shoe. And that's where I really felt like the React Foam and the carbon fiber plate were playing well together. The other thing that it reminded me of because it is React in the midsole is that um, I got that hot spot around mile 5.89, because I, I remember feeling it and then looking at my watch. So 5.89, just shy of 10K, uh, I started feeling a hot spot in the right foot, right under the ball of my foot, and it wasn't uh, painful, it, but it was noticeable there. Uh, usually in a lot of React based shoes that goes away, but it takes a while for that to happen. Again, I'm not sure if that's the React foam mellowing out after like 50 miles or if that's my foot starting to kind of just get used to what it's feeling in the shoe over that course of miles. But in either event, it's not usually a huge deal, but it's also what would make me always pick a Vaporfly over a Zoomfly for a race is that difference uh, because it uh, definitely over the course of an entire marathon for me, it's something that I would feel in my feet, but also in my leg muscles as well because it's not absorbing as much of the impact of your foot strike over the course of long distances. But even with that all aside, I think that this is the best Zoomfly that Nike has made to date and uh, very exciting to put these on and I love just the way it looks. I love running in it and I love the way it feels. So very excited to put some more summer miles into this shoe uh, and just have a really great fun time this summer. Those are my thoughts on the Zoom Fly 3. If you've got them already and have been running in them, let me know in the comments if uh, I'm totally off base or if your experience has been the same or different. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down there. I'd love to talk to you some more. Before I go, I wanna to talk to you guys about the charity runner for this week. It's Bobby Buchanan, a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. He's running the Chicago Marathon this year. It's his first marathon, and he's doing it in honor of his late father uh, for Project Purple, which is an organization that hopes to fight pancreatic cancer. I've already donated $70 to Bobby's fundraising efforts, and I'll post links in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?